of TCP. Okay. Uh, today we uh, we will just talk about some of the basic stuff. Okay. Although later on uh, we we have to look into the packets, but I didn't share with you the Wireshark capture. So uh, you can assume that today we won't look into the Wireshark because I didn't announce to you. So in the I mean the coming Wednesday, please bring along your laptop. We will again look into a Wireshark capture. That Wireshark capture is some containing some basic TCP control. Okay. So the TCP control one of the highlights. So the highlight is you already using it in a assignment one. You will find that it's quite reliable, right? How many of you have have detect certain failure? What is I mean the failure? I suddenly tell you that oh I cannot receive any packets. Okay, it suddenly stop. No one experienced that, right? Except that you pull pull the lever plug by yourself, right? Or power down some machines. Okay? It's very reliable and FI4, right? The order that you're saying is the order that you receive. So uh, F54 is a very important thing as if uh, you are reading files. Now the second one is pipeline. So what is a pipeline? It is uh, not the ping pong ball protocol. It is a pipeline protocol. Go back and mix with selective repeat. Okay? Through duplex, uh, you will know it is uh, not the same as free part one, okay? Free part one, we talk about uh, not a full duplex model. The model is always have a sender, always have a receiver. So what is the full duplex model? Basically, the same machines containing one receiver state diagram and the receiver diagram together, put together, okay? Becoming a full duplex or bi-directional data transfer, okay? And coordination oriented, we have handshake to establish uh, what are the things we're going to exchange. So what is the thing is exchanged before it? Let's say that, oh, what is my buffer size? What is the meaning of buffer size? How many uh, data I can accommodate? This is a receiver buffer, okay? And then we'll tell you a way to stop, okay? So let's go to take a look at what is TCP. Wow, such a big header, right? So what are the names that you have uh, seen before? So what are the names are soft ports, uh, no, <coughs> source port, a uh, window, right? Windows, no, no, not that window, okay? It's another window. The source port, destination port, okay? So look, look at the size, they are all 16 bits. They are 16 bits. Uh, sequence number, I told you before, I mean, not, not before, just the last part. I tell you that the sequence number, it should be a long one, okay? So as you have a high, high feedback, okay? I mean, not say feedback. Uh, so feedback is, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the go back end, dead end, right? So I shouldn't say feedback, but uh, it's kind of feedback on the performance. But it is a main controlling factor of the performance. The bigger the end, okay, or the bigger the window size, or I shouldn't say the window size, but the sequence number, the higher throughput you can get, okay? Uh, last part, we have already seen that. So here, you also have acknowledgement number, so they combine together in the same packet, okay? Later on, I will tell you why they can uh, have a sequence number together with the acknowledgement number. Uh, header length, to tell the how big is this header, a reserve field never used. Uh, TCP flag, to state that what kind of packet you have. So TCP has ma many kind of packets, a window, so there's not, there's not, not something that's called Linux, okay? So this window is uh, the meaning of uh, how big, okay, the current buffer size of the receiver is. So the, the field to feed back to the, to the center, hey, I'm the receiver, I only have 10 bytes left, okay? Don't push too many data in, it's this guy. So others attract some urgent pointer, urgent pointer, we seldom use it. Uh, TCP option, later on you will see how I use it uh, in, a, in a later slide. Then we will have application layer message. So what does that mean? This is a, a whole set of data that uh, not append, but pre -pen, okay? We call it pre -pen. pre -pen to the application layer, okay? So let's go deep into these two fields, right? We love these two fields because we know them, okay? So how to manipulate them? Uh, now we are going into the real stuff. Don't treat it lightly, okay? It is a real implementation of TCP. And what is this? This is an illustration that we uh, have in part one. So you do need to care about the green guy first, okay? Care about the orange guy first. So what is the orange guy? The orange guy is 
I set our civil suffer in an orange color. Then the other side tell me that, oh, I received your data. So I acknowledge using the green color. Okay? But one point is that TCP is bidirectional. Bidirectional. So what should what should the uh, uh, flow will do is uh, set up another flow called green color. Okay, so two color data transfer. Another will be sending things in green color. Here I send you data using green color sequence number, and the other side tell me that I receive your thing using the green color acknowledgement. Okay. So, but how can you establish the color? Okay, you cannot see. Uh, yeah, is there any color field here? No, nothing. Nothing called color here. Okay. So, how can the TCP implementation combine these two information together? They do it very clever. Way is, they put the green and orange in the same packet. Wow. So, what does that mean? Huh? Let's go back to a previous slides. Okay. Let's imagine our, data, our, our connection is like this, okay? We are doing, a, a, our tutor, did, did, did I have a tutor tell you there is a server called Echo Server? No, no one, no one know what I'm talking about, Echo Server. Echo Server is that I am a client, I tap an A, okay? And then press Enter. So A and Enter will send to the server, and what is the behavior of Echo Server? Echo Server will just reply A and Enter. So what you type is what to what the reply from the server, okay? So let's imagine that this this kind of server. This green guy, I send out a green guy first, okay? Let's say it's an A and enter two bytes. So take out the two bytes and the server receive it, and the server should tell me that okay, I receive your two bytes and color is in orange. But at the same time, because I said that the Echo server behavior is like this. I will receive your A and enter, and at the same time, I will also reply to you with the same piece of data, A and enter, same with this guy. So they will combine these two guys together. The TCP control. The TCP control can separate these two guys, no problem. But to save data, it combine them. What does the mean of combine? First of all, I create a TCP packet with the ACK of orange saying that okay I acknowledge your data but at the same time I want to send you things as well. So the header will that's why the header together with a sequence number and ACK number in the same packet and they describe different flows. Actually there are two flows here. One is the orange flow, one is the green flow. Okay? Understand this concept two different flows. Now here this guy will combine this together First, I answer you that I receive the A and enter. But at the same time, I want to generate a piece of new data to you. No problem. The data, the sequence, the ACK combine together into this, this log. Into this log. Okay? So using our what we have previously, you can first ignore this ACK because I did, didn't tell you what is the green ACK yet. Okay? So the orange sequence number, let's say it's a 15 packet. The 15 packet, so I send to the server telling you that, hey, I sent you something new. And the server will tell me that, no problem, I will acknowledge you using the 15 because I tell you that I received 15 already. And at the same time, I want to generate a new data. So let's say the data item is called 21. So I will have the sequence number 21 together with the data for the, the packet 21 combined together, okay? So that's why we have the header with, whoops. Ah, oh, this is interesting, huh? Every time it's like this. Okay, so that's why we will have a, a strange header, header way, okay? We have a, why the header all have both sequence number and acknowledgement number, and later if you look at the TCP traits, you will see these two numbers keep changing because they are doing two things at the same time. First thing, acknowledge something we said earlier. Here, the green guy is to give tell you that I have new data as well. So you can uh, cover your eye and look at the green part only or the orange part only because they belong in the two different flows. Now go to the green ACK. I didn't say anything about green ACK, right? So the green ACK is very interesting. They this, this is, in this figure, only we have two packets, so we cannot tell why. Actually, 
This ACK training is to acknowledge something happened before. What is the thing happened before? The, share, the server has shared a new data with sequence number 20 to the client. And that's why when it's saying the sequence number 15 is together also acknowledge the previous green packet or green data. So any question about this? Any questions? Yeah, there should be a natural questions. What is the natural questions? Natural question is, what if this server is not an echo server? Let's call it a black hole server. So what's a black hole? You say, say whatever things here, you don't reply. Okay? No reply. All things in in uh, in the flow, okay, going from a client to the server, the server never replies to you. Then what should you do? What will happen? Can you guess? Yeah, just a very natural way. No one want to guess? Very easy. The green never change. Always say that all. Oh, this is sequence number one. But the sequence number one don't have anything. Okay? Always say that all. Oh, this is sequence number one, but don't have anything. So this data part will be empty. Destroy completely. Destroy no data. Just tell you that there's an ACK. We call it as this is a, a zero length data, but a purely ACK action. Just want to acknowledge you. If it is no data, okay. Later on, you will see some change, okay. And what is the name here? The name here is very interesting. It's called piggybacking. So what is piggybacking? I I can imagine a picture, okay. It seems that there is a pig, okay. The pig is riding. I don't mean I'm riding. It's it's moving, okay. And you put something onto the back of the pig, and the pig is wow wow. There's a, there's a, some goose riding on the pig, okay. So it's called piggybacking. So to put the ACK on top of some useful data. Okay, it's called piggybacking acknowledgement. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? So it seems to be natural integration, right? And then how about the numbers? How about the numbers? So what are the numbers? The sequence number and the ACK number. Now there is some change, okay? For you have already digested the previous thing, okay? Sorry, we have to change. What is the change? In go back and SL, the selective repeat, as well as the, all the reliable data transfer protocol, we use the I here, the sequence number I, to identify what is the packet number, right? The packet number one, packet number two, packet number three, and disregard the size of the packet, right? Just what happened uh, before. And in TCP, TCP is doing something. Uh, much more clever. I would say this is clever. Later on, we will know why it's clever. Okay? So they are doing some change. The change is it don't identify the packet number anymore. But it tells you that the sequence number is actually telling you that what is the offset in the byte stream. So what is the meaning of byte stream and offset? The byte stream means that, you know, from now on you should treat the whole TCP stream as like reading a file sequentially. Okay, like reading a file sequentially. And the sequence number now is going to tell you what is the offset, that means the position inside that file. Or I should say the position inside the TCP stream. Okay? So what is the new meaning here? The new meaning is sequence number i with the data of two byte. It means that I now start sending you the i byte in this packet, but look at the size, the size with two bytes, okay? So that means that the, the leading one is i, and the second one is i plus one, okay? So this is very slight change here, from changing to addressing the packet sequence become byte sequence, okay, in terms of bytes. Now with the replies, the replies has uh, changed a lot, okay? Previous cases, I tell you that, oh, ACK comes in with a number I means that I receive something up to I. Now, this is not the case. In the ACK of TCP design, TCP will tell you that, hey, reply to I plus one means that, okay, you just send me I and I plus one. Oh, sorry, uh, it's two here. You send me I and I plus one, next time send me I plus two. Okay? So understand what I mean? This means next time send me something. 
and how to compute this plus two is because of these two bytes. Okay? So this is TCP. And now I have examples. The example is concerning uh, the whole design of the kernel. The kernel is here, the kernel is here, the receiver, the center, both of their kernels, as well as their application. So let's imagine if the application wants to send data in both ways. Okay? So this guy wants to send hi. This guy wants to send bye. Okay, so they're not, okay. not good friends. Okay, what is time and spy? Okay? So what what should they do? What should they do? This guy will start the transfer. Let's imagine like this. So the transfer with, let's say, uh, I don't know why you choose to uh, send using the right system call with, to size one. Okay. So then this buffer you want to send out the first byte will send out H. Will send out H. Okay. So here, in terms of the TCP packet generated, you will have sequence number one. Okay, the sequence starts with number one. Okay, tell you that this is the first byte in the, in the screen. Okay, and what is the size of packet? The size of packet is only containing one. One. Okay. Now the the secret is why is that there is an ECK equal to one? Okay. Now I tell you what is this. This means that ACK one telling you this guy that okay, the bytes that I just received is some numbers I don't care now please give me offset number one okay now it match what happened previously happened previously is I said your ACK I plus two means that hey give me offset I plus two now here means that I tell you that I have some data to send and the data is the offset number one and the link is one as well I also tell you information, if you want to send me something, please give me offset number one. Okay, contain two information together. And go on. Let's say this guy want to as well send something, and together I will deliver from the send buffer to the receive buffer to this kernel. And let's say this guy is greedy, how greedy it is, using one call, sending all the data I want, I want to deliver, to the other side. So here we'll have some, now remember, though this two packet is very, very uh, similar, this time with sequence number one, they carry different meaning. What is the meaning of different meaning? Here it means that the application want to say something, it starts with is sequence number one, the first byte. Now look at this first, first byte is totally different from this first byte. This first byte is describing this application this one describing this application. This sequence number one is describing this application. This totally different. Okay, so what does that mean? Now this means that sequence number one is the first byte. It's match the previous case, uh, the previous uh, data I received. What is the matching? The matching is I want you to send me with sequence sub one. So here is tell you that please send me one, I send you one. Okay, now how about this ACK? This ACK are incremented by, it seems to be incremented by one, but no, okay? It means this sequence one, the byte stream one, I send you one byte already. Now, what should you expect next? I expect you give me the sequence by, set, by offset number two, sequence offset two, okay? Because I already reset, received the H already. Now I send you B, Y, E. Let's guess. If this guy want to deliver our ACK to this side, what should be the ACK number? I give you two choice. Three or four. Huh? Who we'll think it's three? Who we'll think it's four? Four. Yeah, very good, okay? So, please deliver me the fourth byte. Please deliver me the fourth byte. Okay, now here, what happened here? SEQ equal to two. What is the meaning? The meaning is, I continue to send the data, and now the next sequence to send is this byte and this byte. So what is the I? I is the second byte of the stream. So I will tell you that my sequence is starting with the second byte, okay, starting with the second byte, and as well, I have two bytes in the length, in the data part. Okay, so another game, 
Here, when it uh, replies you with the ACK, it's again is equal to ACK4. Again, it's equal to ACK4, but, but what, what is the but? What is the but? Here, this application already delivered all the data. Okay, it don't have further data to deliver. So what should this application do? It will do with our ACK only, do not do with it, okay? Same with the ACK only, okay? And there is no data here. And look at the ACK number. It's uh, to tell this guy that, okay, when you first, uh, when you next time phone to deliver some data, start with by stream offset four, no problem. Now, how about this sequence number? This sequence number seems to be strange. I mean, uh, what is the strange part? The strange part is, I know that uh, when I next deliver you something, the by offset one, two, three are already used, so I have to use four. I tell you four sequence, okay, but any data, no. Okay, so this is the, the normal way for a TCP to give you something empty. It tells you as it's empty, no data, but it still have to follow the sequence number. Um, I mean, it's not normal notation, but, uh, but the way it goes, okay, it describes the byte stream offset. So it's still byte stream offset is four. Okay, so it seems to be hard. There are rules, okay? So the rule is, uh, first of all, when you look at, if, if I give you this kind of question in the final exam, okay, what should you do, okay? So uh, I don't know whether you bring some uh, color, ball, color ball pen or a highlighter. Okay, uh, you can do it, okay, by highlighting that there are two stream actually, okay? So I will color this one as a red stream, one is a blue stream, okay? So when you look at uh, the ACK pairing with the sequence number, you will always find that the previous ACK, the previous ACK is equal to your, your current sequence in terms of the same color, okay? And how about when I want to ACK you, okay, acknowledge you. When I want to acknowledge you, I will have the sequence number plus the length. So I want to acknowledge you, okay, I look at the uh, sequence number one plus three data, three bytes. So this is one plus three equal to four. Okay, so these are the rules. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, it will be, uh, I mean, uh, Looking at this was boring, okay? I promise you that on Wednesday I will uh, share with you my TCP capture so that you look at the TCP capture, then you will learn a lot more. Question. Yes? What if uh, there is data loss uh, in, uh, for example, we send, I send uh, three bytes, but it received two bytes. Or it's and fairly the, seldom to, to lose part of it. Either the whole packet is missing. But, but it's very, uh, I mean, uh, how can you have a partial loss, right? Yeah, I send you a, a, a TCP packet, a whole, whole bunch of it with the header, with the data, and what you describe is I lost something partial. Yeah, it's not, not going to happen. Yeah, okay, any questions? No, then we will go to have our data loss. Okay, data loss, so uh, I, as, as our student, uh, class may have have asked the question, hey, there's a partial loss? No, there's no partial loss. Always have a whole packet loss, okay? Either we consider it as a corruption or it is being dropped in an in a intermediate uh, path of device. So what a device, maybe some switch, some switch say that, oh, I should drop this guy, or some router in, in the path, in a connection path. So you decide to drop it, so it will be disabled, uh, dis disappear completely. So what will happen? Again, it be it belongs to the previous uh, part. Previous part say that, okay, I'm a sender. I send something, but you don't reply with me for, with in a reasonable time, so I will have a timeout, okay? But before timeout, what should you uh, see? You will see something like this, okay? So you send three guys, the last guy is dropped. So the last guy will be disappeared. Now look at the receiver. The receiver will receive, first I will uh, have a length of five and sequence equal to one. So I expect the ACK will be one plus five. So ACK one plus five is six. 
Then why is parallelly sending two guys with different sequence number? Now take a very close look here. This two is sending parallelly because I said that TCP will implement pipeline, so it will parallelly send something out. Okay, and when it parallelly send something out, it will use different sequence, different byte offset to tell you that they are different. Okay, so this is the way that you tell you they are different. They are belonging to the different byte offset. So this belongs to the, the byte number one, and it starts with one include five bytes. So it means one, two, three, four, five. And the next guy is uh, starting with byte number six with the length five, so it's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way up, okay. How about eleven? Eleven all also the same, but it locks. So you will miss out the third ACK and the third ACK will generate with transmission like this. So it seems to be normal, right? It's just the same case for the, um, no matter it is a selective repeat, go back in, RDT, they are all behave the same. Now, what happened if I have another scenario? Huh? Let's say I boost up the pipeline. Okay, what does it mean? A post of pipeline, and ima let's imagine a pipeline around you to send one, two, three, four, five, five packets all together. Okay, yeah, don't get me wrong. Okay, I create a special scenario like this. Okay, usually a uh, TCP won't do this. A uh, swap it off for five, 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 five. It will combine together and send you one thousand something bytes at at the same time. Okay. So this is being broken into five pieces of five. By data and look at the sequence number. Mm, okay, they are in good shape, right? One is one and then plus five into say six plus five into eleven, all the way down to twenty one. Okay, now what should this behave here is something that similar to you. What does the meaning of similar to you? If I have so sent something to this side, this side want to acknowledge good. Tell me the acknowledgement. With uh, sequence number plus the linear length equal to six, no problem. Now, because the second one is lost, the third one I want to reply have to indicate that hey, something wrong. Okay. So what is the meaning of something wrong? Look at here. This should be eleven plus five, plus five equal to sixteen, right? Should be something like that. But the reply coming in. Telling you that uh, don't don't take a look at, at the sequence number because we don't have any data. So sequence all the way to the one, but ACK is six. It means that hey, give me the byte of six six. So it means what? It means the byte of the six starting from six is lost. Okay, it don't know where the day. And how about this guy? I don't tell you their fate yet. Okay, later I will tell you the fate of these three guys. Okay, so what should you do? You have to wait for these three guys to come in with duplicated acknowledgement. So the ACK are duplicated and they will be disregard, right? Because uh, I don't want any duplicated acknowledgement. And wait for timeout and we transmit the number six. Okay? For TCP, they can do a very uh, clever job. Okay? I only write a stupid answer here. What is a clever job? The clever job is. It will use sequence number equal six, data length equal to twenty. Understand what I mean? Understand what, what I just said? If this is clever, it will say sequence number six with transmission, but the data is trending. So what are the why it is trending? Why it is equal to twenty if it's clever? Who, who agree with me? It should be twenty. No one agree. So you, you think it should be five? And someone laughs, so they are oh, not five. Okay, then not twenty, not five. What is that? Okay, twenty-five. Well, just make the number. Oh, 100. If it is twenty, what is the meaning? Yeah, what is the meaning? Do you know what is the meaning? Yeah, you just mm, very agree with me. Okay. No, 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 it's not If it's 20, then, uh, then the, 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 next, the next data of set is 21. Right? It's, it's, no, it's 21 
No, 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 no. I mean, the data length is Friday. Yeah, so it's 6 plus 20. Six plus twenty. You say no, no, not, 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 not in that way. So, so that I can, I can save the sender to, to repeatedly send the, the, the bird to feed. Right, right. That, that's the point. That's the point. So imagine that. Uh, uh thank you. Uh, imagine that this feed, according to what we learned from our previous part, it will be disregarded. Okay, because it's not something we we want. So I will drop this guy. Drop this guy. Drop this guy. So do you. Do you think that we will we transmit all one, two, three, four guys with four diff different packets? TCP will not do this. TCP will choose to combine it together using one packet. So that's why this is one of the reasons why it don't use the packet item number. Yeah, as a previous case, item number one, item number two, item number three. But change it into five addressable thing. Because I can combine things together and tell you, hey, up to which bytes I want to reply to you. Okay? So it can combine this one, two, three, four, four guys, four times fifty, and four by five. Four by is equal to twenty and put it to into one packet and we transmit all data in one packet only. Okay? So this is the way. But why are you drawing this way? Because of some other solution later I will tell you. Okay? And TCP will also improve this by a little bit. So what is the little bit thing? Okay. This is something uh, not written in any box. Okay, because it's kind of a uh, really not very very up to date protocol. Okay. Uh, TCP uh, has go through many many RFC RFC requests for comment. Do you know what is RFC? Some documents describing some specification. It go through some uh, modification. One of the modifications is called fast retransmission. So what's the meaning of fast retransmission? So let's say the pipeline effect is first very uh, good, okay? We want to enjoy pipeline, so we always encourage pipeline. Let's say I do a pipeline with 10 packets as, as a whole, okay? And suddenly, I drop one of them. I don't know why it's being dropped. Then I will keep receiving acknowledgement which are duplicated. Okay, and in this case. Now, in TCP, it do a very clever, a little bit clever, okay? The next one is really clever, okay? This very little clever thing is, if you find triple duplicated acknowledgement, so what does that mean? Yeah, it has some physical meaning. If you have one data job, but you keep on receiving duplicated acknowledgement, it means two things. One. It means some of the packet drop, I don't know how many, but in between some of it is being dropped. Two second case, there are congestion. I don't know in which not. Okay, maybe in an intermediate router or in a let's say a CH case under 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 attack, okay. So CH case router want to drop a packet, but the the congestion is not very severe. Do you know what I mean? It's not severe, it means that I don't need to drop all packets. I can let some of the packets go through. Some packets can go to the other end, but the other end don't want me and reply me with duplicate acknowledgement. So it means two things. Understand what I mean? The first thing is congestion is not strong, it's not severe. Okay? Second case is I don't know for how many data I get dropped. Okay? So for how many data I get dropped, I can easily be calculated using the ACK of duplicate acknowledgement sequence. So this sequence of duplicate acknowledgement, what happened to me? The sequence of duplicate acknowledgement, okay, tell you that uh, previously I sent out the sign with one up to ACK6 and keep on telling me ACK6. So that means up to six, they are safe, safely delivered to the other end. So what I need to be transmit is after sex. Okay? So problem problem number one solved. I know I know what are the things that keep being dropped. Now second is I can take a look at the congestion scenario. The congestion scenario is not strong, right? Because I just lost partially, I still get ACK coming back. So I shouldn't wait. I shouldn't wait because it's just a maybe a uh the case is like this, okay? I don't know whether you experience or not, okay? I experience a lot, okay? When you're using a 
you are using a cell phone, okay? And and then you go to your what I don't want to say toilet. Any other better example? Uh, ele elevator, okay? Elevator is a better example, okay? You go in the elevator. Now you know that our elevator can still go, to, can still use Wi-Fi, right? But when it change from one floor to another floor, suddenly you experience some something wrong, right? While you are doing low push rolling, you suddenly say that it's just a jump from one channel to another, okay? Or not just uh, from one channel to another, but disconnect for a while, okay? So when it disconnect for a while, okay, it seems to be a very small, very uh, uh, insignificant congestion is happening, okay? So in Wi-Fi, we experience a lot, okay? Why I want to say it's toilet, okay? Toilet is the best example, uh, when you go into the toilet. You can, you can experience it, I, I do the experiment, okay? You can feel the difference when you close the door and open the door. <laughs> yeah, try that, believe me. <laughs> There are difference, okay? It, it suddenly is, it's changed a little bit, okay? Hmm. Uh, don't tell me why I do this experiment, right? Uh. Uh, don't, don't tell me why means that I, I expect you know why, okay? Hmm. Okay, then go on, go on. So what should the TCP uh, state? I mean, uh, that's not a state, but, uh, but uh, this guy, the client guy, okay? The client guy will experience a weak congestion and immediately send out the retransmission without waiting for timeout. Without waiting for timeouts. Because we know that the congestion is not that bad. Okay? So we call it fast retransmission. Okay? And how about, hey, I have a tons of duplicated enlargement coming back. Okay? Don't worry, okay, we will be set the counter. Okay? Don't say that, ah, oh, the fourth one is also the triple duplicated enlargement, right? Because it's a two, three, four duplicated. So we retransmit again, no. Okay, so we set the timer, we set the counter to count for free again. Okay, so this is called triple, uh, it's triple duplicate acknowledgement to drive the fast resubmission of TCP. Okay, so one more problem, the problem is this guy, okay? So in the previous drawing, I just say that, okay, this guy, I don't tell you what are the fates, but when I retransmit, I only retransmit the thing that being lost is there should be a reason, right? The reason is, I didn't say anything about this area, whether it's implement go back in or selective repeat. So what is the difference? If I implement go back in on the receiver side, it means that all packets will be dis disregarded, will be dropped, okay? I don't want it. I wait for the retransmission to compensate all the things that I lost or I disregard. Okay, so this is solution number one. Solution number two is selective repeat. Selective repeat is to say that, okay, the sender will keep a timer to remember what are the, let's say, this is the second packet. What, when the second packet will be a, get a timeout, okay? So we should keep all the out of all the packet in the receiver's eye. So how can we mix this two together, together? Okay, and in TCP, is implemented, it is a quite new, okay? Quite new means that in a in an era of, in a, I mean, a, in a time, uh, I guess this is 2002, okay? 2002 or two, two year 2000, okay? It implemented this uh, track. This, this track is called selective acknowledgement, okay? It's still, uh, there is uh, some, uh, some acknowledgement here, but it's selective. So what's the meaning of selective enrichment? So this is an illustration of a comparison with the SR or Gobert N, I can scale it. Okay, so to use SACK, okay, later in a TCP uh, trace I will share with you, will include a SACK implementation. So SACK implementation is hidden here. It's called TCP option. So you don't need to know what exactly the structure is. Now, let's take a look here. Now, what will happen if this guy is dropped and with the acknowledgement sending back trigger by the out of order packet? So, this is considered to be out of order because I missed sequence 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They are all lost. Okay? So, I will consider this uh, out of order. If it's go back end, I will drop them and reply with ACK 6. 
But I said this is a combination, so I won't drop it. I will keep all the data here. I will keep all the data here. Now, what should I do to tell this side that, okay, I had kept something in my memory, but still I know that I dropped something. I want to tell you I have something dropped. Please compensate for the 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So it implements something interesting. So it still reply with a sequence number number six, but send me a range inside the TCP option. The range is the range of data that I kept in my RAM. So what is the meaning here? I kept the data 11 to 15 on my RAM. But because of this six, because of this six, it means that I miss six. But I start receive good guys starting from a five eleven. So I miss six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So what should we have if this uh the third one, the fourth one, okay? The fourth ACK, the fourth fourth data, okay. Fourth data, but the ACK is to acknowledge the fourth data. So you will still find the ACK number is six. But the receive range change. The receive range change will say that okay, I receive good guys up to number five. I want six. Yet I receive something, but I keep in my, my RAM starting from eleven to twenty. Ah, very easy to understand, right? Now, what happened if this? <laughs> I have two guys create a broken range. Okay. So don't worry if it's creating a broken range. In this piece of a TCP option, it will still describe the same scenario. I will tell you that I received good guys up to data offset number six. I missed out seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I received 10, 11. Here, 11 plus five. That means 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No problem. But 16 to 20, I miss it. So here is the gap. So what is that? This is a link list actually. <laughs> a link list of data that I received. I put in the TCP option and the ACK describing so far what is the current uh, bytes that I received in a good shape. Okay? So together, combined together, it seems to be implementing go back and together with the selective repeat. Okay, so it's changed a bit, the name is called selective acknowledgement. Okay, now when you go to retransmit the thing, now the retransmission is very easy to be done. Okay, I can first generate the first piece of data because it's, there is a gap. Okay, I fill the first gap by sending a sequence 6 with 5 bytes. So this will be 6, nine, uh, six 7, 8, 9, 10. So I fill the first hole. Then and when I reply with the ACK, I will say that, okay, I, you fill in this hole, so I will tell you that the good guys that I received up to 16 only. 11 plus 5 is 16. 16 only, please give me 16. But up beyond 16, I still receive some good guys. 21 to 25. Okay? So this is not something that uh, only appear in PowerPoint. It appear really in TCP capture in your real life. Okay, real life, let's say that you're taking your cell phone, go to close, close the door, suddenly lost one packet. Okay, what should, you, what should uh, the underlying is doing? Is underlying is doing the same thing here. Okay, any questions? Any question you want to ask? No? No? Then we will talk about free handshake. Okay, free handshake, I want to give you some puzzle. What is the meaning of free handshake? Huh? So free handshake, uh, in many books, it don't tell you this idea. And I find in, in, in all universities that I know, no one explains in this way. Oh, so this is my own invention, okay? How can you explain to yourself that, hey, why is this free, okay? So imagine in, in, in a in an area, okay, two months later, CUHK will be like this, okay? Full of fog, 
okay? I tell you the story, right? Four o'clock, okay? Very foggy. Okay, you cannot see it from here to, to there, okay? Very foggy. But there are two guys. These two guys are crazy. They want to play tennis in this foggy environment. I don't know why, because of PE examination or not, okay? So they want to practice. Now, the problem is, I cannot see the opposite side. But when the ball is coming close enough, I can still see the ball so that I can play. Now the problem comes. I know that there are already two guys here. Okay? I, I, mean, I mean, I am one of the players. I know there are at least one guy standing up on, on the opposite side. But I don't know whether I should start the game. Let's say I'm holding the ball. Okay? Or I should say that I don't know whether the other guy also holding the ball as well. Okay? Now the problem is, how many messages that you should tell the opposite guy or the opposite guy also tell you how many messages together that we, want to, we need to say in order to start the game. Let's say I want to start the game. I, I hold all the balls, okay? The other side don't have any balls. But others, the other side is waiting for me to start, okay? So what should you do? Imagine. Yeah, you can discuss with the neighbor. Then you will start understanding why it's free. Yeah, because not because free is a magic number. It's because of necessity. What's the first message? The first, the first message is Hoi Bola, start the game. Let's start the game. Hoi Bola. Right? Then, after you say this, should you start the game immediately? Should you? No. Right? Of course not. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You're waiting for what? What's your name? Ah. What's your name? Who said? Who said that? Your friend. Your friend, right. Your friend also replied with Hoshila. Yeah, it's right. Okay. Then should you start? <laughs> right. He 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 say all oh, the entire scenario. The first message is I say, Hoi Bola. Let's start the game. Then the other side need to tell you that I know what you said. Right? So the other side asks you, Hoi Bola. Or I say, I am ready. Now, when I broadcast the second message, I am ready, what is the information? The information is, let's say I'm A, the other side, side is B. A knows that B knows A is ready. <laughs> yeah, very logical, right? A knows B knows A is ready. Now the problem is the problem is this two message is not enough. Why is that enough? What if when B shouting out I'm ready, A is already walked away? Okay, then what what will be B become B will become like this for one hour? Okay, where is that guy? Okay, I I have this, okay. Yeah, I cannot start the game. Okay, why? Because the A doesn't reply, right? Doesn't reply to confirm that I hear you. Okay? So you have two choices. The first choice is for the A, you can use the ball to become your message. See you. Okay, start the game. Or you can say one more message, say that, okay, let's start, and then the ball comes. Right? But which approach you love? Do you love the first approach that immediately starts again? No, it shouldn't be like that, right? It should tell the other side that, okay, let's start to have the third message. And the fourth message is not the message already, it's the ball. Okay? To keep the game playing, then uh, well, you don't need the, the further message shouting out. Understand what I mean? Now it start, starts getting the idea why is free message, right? Why is free message? And it's because you cannot see the other side whether the other side is ready or not. Now imagine that in a TCP scenario, TCP scenario is exactly the same. You know that there exists another host. But you don't know whether the other host is ready or not. So what's the meaning that the other host is not host ready or not? I don't know whether that side has memory to create a connection for me. So you have to perform these free handshake messages. Okay?